Good evening. Tonight's witness is Lydia. She's a buxom woman, aged about 40. The witness, Lydia. Pilate and his wife, my mistress, were in Israel about 10 years. And I can honestly say I was as frightened of that man at the end as at the beginning of it. He was never cruel to me or any of the house servants, but he did some terrible things. As governor or procurator, as he was called, he had absolute power. He killed many. He followed Gratus, whom we all liked better. Gratus used to talk about bringing more water to Jerusalem, but did nothing. Pilate built an aqueduct and took money from the temple treasury to pay for it. It put the city under martial law, nearly caused a riot. It was during that period that I met my husband, Barabbas. He was well known in the city as an anti-Roman agitator. There was a whole bunch of them, and they caused a great lot of trouble. They were called zealots. All sorts of people called themselves zealots, from the toughest gutter boy to highly educated scribes, even lawyers and priests. My Barabbas, bless him, was nearer gutter boy than priest. He's quieter now, but when he was younger, before Jesus was crucified, he was a terror. Very handsome, popular with the ladies, and he knew it. I disapproved of him entirely. I come from what is called a respectable family. We've been in service to the royals or the Roman governors for generations. I was a lady's maid, first to the wife of Gratus, and then when Pilate came, to his wife. I miss her very much indeed. A lovely person, Lady Claudia. Barabbas and I are both followers of Jesus. They shouldn't have killed him. He did no harm. But killing him made him live, if you know what I mean. Oddly enough, I first heard of Jesus from Barabbas. On my days off, I used to go to a social club in the west end of the city. I liked it, it was lively. A lot of the servants of the palace and government house used to go. It was well run. It was there I met Barabbas, just after the aqueduct disturbance. He and his friends had been trying to stir up the unrest into a full science war against the Romans. Very naughty, very silly. When things quietened down, he and some of the other young zealots used to come to the club. A very earnest lot, most of them. A lot of students among them, wanting to change the world. Fat chance. It was a Roman world. Well, I was telling Barabbas about Pilate's wife, my mistress, and her bad dreams and nightmares. She used to suffer terribly. She would wake screaming and rigid, or for days would be afraid to even go to sleep. Would it pale and exhausted, poor soul? Pitiful to see. She hated taking stuff. Any sort of drug upset her. So I told Barabbas, and he told me about this preacher, Jesus of Nazareth, who, it seemed, could cure people of anything, leprosy, blindness, fits, anything. I told my mistress and she went to one of Jesus' meetings. I went with her. She didn't get near enough to speak to Jesus. There was a great crush of people. But on his way out from those meetings he used to walk slowly. and The crowd used to keep running forward to form lines on either side of them. We did the same. And as he passed us, he looked straight into my mistress's eyes. She didn't say anything, neither did he. 
but that same night she began to sleep better. I can't explain it. She believed, and that was enough. I was grateful to Barabbas, and I let him take me out a few times. Away from his wild friends, he was very nice, and he respected me. A bit too much, I thought. He had a wicked reputation as a lover, and I wouldn't have minded. But not once did he try to take liberties or go too far. He would have been the first. After we were married, he told me he knew that, and he wanted it kept that way until he married me. Very sure of himself he was, less so after Jesus died. If Jesus hadn't died, I wouldn't have had my Barabbas. Although it's about ten years ago now, Pilate's been gone for nearly four years. It's well remembered how the mob screamed for Barabbas to be freed from prison and for Jesus to be killed. It could have been the other way around. Pilate had this rule of releasing one prisoner on every major feast day. Barabbas and two of his friends had been caught red-handed in some sabotage nonsense, and they'd stolen arms from the Roman garrison. It was all very brave and stupid and dangerous, and they were put in prison and became sort of heroes. They were sentenced to death, but Pilate set no date. He was waiting for things to calm down. Then, not long after, Jesus was arrested. I remember every detail of the morning Jesus was questioned by Pilate. He was in a foul temper. Any sort of delegation or council or committee brought out the worst in him. And that morning, it seemed every elder and high priest and lawyer in Jerusalem was screaming and shouting at him. Pilate shut them up and made them their spokesman take the charges. Then he began to question Jesus, who hardly answered him. That made him angrier still. I heard about that part later because I had my own troubles. My mistress, who had been sleeping normally for months, woke up that morning screaming and terrified. Worse than before she went to Jesus. She was in a dreadful state. I had to slap her and throw cold water in her face to bring her round, to wake her up properly. She babbled and wet, and when she quietened down, she asked what all the shouting was about outside. When I told her it had to do with Jesus, she jumped up with staring eyes like a madwoman. Go to Pilate, she screamed at me. Tell him to have nothing to do with this matter. Nothing to do with Jesus. That good, good man. I've had such dreams, such terrible dreams of death and massacre and disgrace and banishment and blood and exile. Tell him to have nothing to do with it. Nothing. Go and tell him, she screamed. Tell him. Well, I did as she asked. I went to the forecourt and told Pilate. He listened without changing his expression, his eyes as cold as ice. Then he turned to the great mob and asked them whom they wanted released, Jesus or Barabbas. They roared for Barabbas and that Jesus should be crucified, which was done. Barabbas and I were at the crucifixion. How could we not go? It changed Barabbas. Me too. We married soon after. Some people blamed Barabbas, which was stupid. It had nothing to do with him. Six years after Jesus was killed, my mistress's dream came true, sort of. 
although she never told me the details of the dream. Pilate heard about a great crowd of harmless treasure hunters in Samaria, and he sent in an armed force and killed hundreds. Death, massacre, and blood. The Samarians complained to Rome, and Pilate and his wife were recalled to Rome and then banished to southern France. Disgrace and banishment. I heard he committed suicide. I doubt it. My poor mistress, she changed too, you know. After Jesus died, she was a follower in her own way. She helped the fellowship a lot on the quiet, and she never had another nightmare. <laughs>